and we'll open up this this meeting and we will have room for public comment um, after the items on the agenda which will limit to five um, minutes could you be a little louder dune i can't hear you oh turn your mic, oh, turn mic around maybe <laughs> thank you martha okay martha yep we're um opening that's better and thank you you're welcome we're um thanks for um keeping us um loud <laughs> we're um opening this meeting here at 6 16 now and um after the item items on the agenda and then turn off my loud phone we will um uh, hello robert are you having trouble signing into the meeting yeah well, i went i went down to the town clerk's office and there was a paper that fell in front of the meeting so are you coming in person or are you going to join us with zoom I'd love to join you in person, but that's not going to happen tonight. Uh, um, so, Bill, I have um, a call in number is one nine two nine two zero five six zero nine nine. That's right. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's correct. So, um, okay, the ID, I, you're, you're in a hurry. You've got to get on. To we've the got the meeting the just ID started. Yeah, you should have all that information. I think you. It sounds. The password. The password is nine one eight one one zero two. No, nine one eight one zero two. He said one twice. Nine one eight one zero two. Nine one eight one one zero two. No, mm -hmm. one, only one one there. Nine one eight one zero two. Nine one eight one zero two. There you go. Lord should enjoy, and hopefully we can. All right, we'll see you. Um, see you on the computer there. All right. Well, I guess it's good to answer the phone. Don't want anyone not having access. Um, they don't have video. No. Okay. Um, as I was about to say when my phone rang with someone that was having trouble getting into the meeting. Well, it's the system. This is the number of people want to have trouble yeah. logging in. So we want to be accessible. Uh, we will. Um, um, there's five minutes per public comment after the end of the agenda. So. Let's um, start in with the um, prior minutes for the October 11th meeting, and those look fine to me. I didn't have any corrections, so I move to approve those. I second it. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. All right. And we have, um, I see the um, Murray family is, is hovering in the doorway where you're um, first on the new business, so you want, you want to speak? We're just wondering, can we go second on the new business? I know you had one other issue. There's one person who's not here. One person's not, not here? Yeah. All right, so we'll, we'll put you on hold there for a second. Thank you. When they do talk, I could barely hear her if they could come a little closer. Yeah, if you come closer to the mic. Yeah, we could turn the mic around. All right, so we have um, the appointment of uh, not the new health officer because he was the existing health officer, um, John White and his term of office expires um, on November 30th and I did talk with John and he said that unless anyone else steps up that is dying to hold that position he's willing to continue on. Do I hear any takers? No, so I'd, I'd move to reappoint John White as the town health officer. I second that. All in favor? All right. Reporting in progress. All right. Okay. <laughs> And you'll just, uh, I guess they'll let us know when they're ready to move forward. So we have a, jump through that a little bit. Quicker. Park use thing. Yep, park use. <clears throat> we have an application for use of the Rochester um, Park for the Rochester Rec Committee for a Halloween event on 1029. Boy, what we got here? Yep. It's a pumpkin carving contest. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. So, yeah. The um, classic jack-o'-lantern pumpkin display. Um, I I like that. I think that everyone likes that. I'd move to approve that application. I second it. All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. All right. Like that. And they're still not ready for us. So we've got a. Um, 
lawn mowing, sidewalk, snow removal contract renewal for the summer of 22 and winter of 22-23. And we have... Um, we have we, to advertise that, don't we? Do we? Yeah, I think we do need to advertise. I don't think we can just approve if um, no. someone is asking that. So we should table that and, and put that out for advertisement. Right. Yep. I just wanted to make sure you guys were ready for yep. that to yep. go right out. Yep. I think yeah, we should put it right out. Okay. Yep. Does that go in the paper? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I believe that um, the current contractors. Um, looking to see if he can get a commitment for longer term so he can justify investing in some new equipment that would be more appropriate for the, the width of the sidewalks. It was, uh, last for year. So yeah, like for winter, yeah. If I'm putting in an ad, what is the time of length of time that you're looking to... Mm -hmm. um, to run the ad? Yeah. No, I mean to for renew the contract to renew for the contract. another three years? Or did you say you wanted well, to start the, same, the clock? Or just to... Yeah. Yeah, this is saying two years here, but I think that are, usually we run that for three years. So okay. let's revisit that and see what. Yeah. Okay, so we'll table that for Ron. Um, we have a request to use the town office basement for monthly free food distribution. Frank, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, I know you looked into that. I think Vic's on the line there on yep. the Zoom, so right. I think he's got a proposal. He was going to, they were going to try it out. Uh, to see how much space they needed this past weekend. I don't know how they did make out. Yeah. With He's here and unmuted. Okay. Oh. Hey, hey, Vic. Hi, do you hear me okay? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that was a qualified okay. Right. How about now? Do you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, good. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, since uh, for the past year, a group of volunteers uh, have been providing monthly food distribution provided through the food bank to uh, Gifford and also through an Everyone Eats program through uh, area restaurants. And we've been doing it monthly in the parking lot behind uh, uh, Hancock Town Hall. And uh, the way that the food is going to be packaged going into the future, it's going to require some repackaging uh, of the food and it's just it's logistically a little more difficult. And so we're looking for indoor space to do that as well as to be able to provide distribution from the same general location. So that's what's driving us to ask this, ask for this now. And this is a program that's serving uh, Rochester, Hancock, uh, uh, Granville primarily, but the other communities adjacent to us are certainly welcome to, to uh, benefit from it. So we've been distributing 60 to 100 bags of food uh, each time, once a month, the last weekend of uh, the month. And uh, we'd like to be able to do that, as I mentioned, from the town uh, office uh, parking lot. This would be on a Saturday morning, typically, uh, or afternoon. It doesn't have to be in the morning. I know that we have the recycling and the trash pick up in the morning, so we don't want to conflict with that. But uh, what we would do would be to bring in food uh, in in bulk package uh, on uh, Friday, uh, break it down into uh, packages that can be given to people into their cars, and then uh, and uh, pass it out on uh, Saturday afternoons. So, uh, Lolly, Lindsay, and I, and uh, Monica Collins, Linda Anderson, um, have been. Uh, Working on this, we put together a nonprofit organization called the uh, Feeding the Valley Alliance, and uh, we're all about uh, helping uh, with uh, food insecurity in the valley. So we think this is a, an important service for people who are uh, food insecure, and uh, we'd love to be able to uh, to do this from the Rochester Town Office. We think the, the lower level lends itself well to this. Uh, we um, have gotten some donations. We would like to get a uh, freezer to put in there so that the restaurant prepared frozen meals can be brought in Friday, kept good, and then uh, handed out uh, on uh, Saturday afternoon for those distributions. So it's a combination of those prepared meals plus uh, fresh vegetables uh, from uh, the food bank is what would be distributed. No cost, no questions asked. The only question is how much do you need? Uh, so that's what uh, we're all about, and we'd love to have the permission to, to do that.
so Frank, you went and um, we've been cleaning that space up since the, it ceased to become the constable's office, and it, it it looks like that would be easily accommodate this. Yeah, we'll have to move some of the paperwork that we stored in there. Mm. Just re repurpose it a little bit there, mm. so they got a space where they can spread out and be able to pack the bags. Because mm. they're getting them in large containers now, where they're not uh, sorted for individuals. Yeah. yeah. So that's what they really need the space for. Um, I, Vic, you're not going to need refrigeration other than the freezer. Is that correct? That, yeah, that's all we're aware of right now, and uh, yeah, it's just the, the vegetables that we're getting, it's uh, potatoes, apples, onions, uh, and then there'll be a couple of variables from once uh, each month, but those will be the three staples. They're, they're shelf staple, uh, and we would put them in uh, rubber tubs or something for the overnight uh, period that they would be in there. So they come in on Friday, we break them down into bags, put them in a, you know, a, a sealable uh, rubber container, plastic container, and then uh, bring them out uh, the next day for distribution. Um, excuse me, Vic, it's Martha. I have a question. You said you do this monthly. Is it on a specific, like the first Saturday or the second Saturday or something of each month? Is there a specific thing I could put in? Last, the last Saturday. Last Saturday. Okay, thank you. And now it turns out that in November and December, the food bank has changed its distribution date to uh, a weekday to just because of the holidays happen to fall uh, as they do. So it's in, from November would be November 22nd, 23rd, December 2021. So those are Monday, Tuesdays, as opposed to Friday, Saturday. So that's just because of the holidays. Vic, are you asking for a, a, a permanent home or just for the winter and then go back to the outdoor setting you had? Well, we'd like it to be indefinite, uh, but, you know, if, if something comes up to either the town's need or the program changes in some fashion, then, you know, we should revisit it and see if it's still working. But uh, we'd like to be able to have it on an ongoing basis. I don't see any problem with it. Yeah, no, no, I didn't. I know. Something. So, Do you have a, a line on a freezer? Uh, we're looking. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say it might be something that um, we put in the uh, put out there that looking for a donation of a of a freezer to help with that because I know it's not easy to just go out and buy utilities right now. Yeah, well, I can yeah. certainly mention that in my Herald article that yeah. you'll yeah. donate a freezer that might help. So. Yeah. yeah, that'd be great. We are a five hundred one c three nonprofit, so donations are tax deductible. All right, All right. So I I. Um, and not a huge freezer, though, right, Vic? You're only yeah. looking like a, you know, a three to five cubic foot, probably. Right. That should be. That should be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd be in favor of, of allowing this. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have an issue with it. Yeah. yeah I'm fine with it as well. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for um, keeping that that endeavor going, Vic. All right. Well, thank you. There's, there's uh, you know, as I mentioned, a number of other people involved as well. And I see uh, Mike Van Dusen's on the call, and, and uh, Ian and have been uh, very helpful in uh, distributions as well. So thank you, Mike. Can I make a suggestion? Robert. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Do it in everyone. It's Robert. Um, I had breakfast at the uh, Hancock Hotel on the last day this past Sunday, I'm wondering, Vic, by the way, thank you for all your goodness because things are going to get a little rough. But I'm wondering if um, if the owner of the Hancock Hotel and Meg could offer a temporary repository for all the goodness that you're delivering to the Valley. It seems logical, logistically, and uh, I'm probably going to be up there this week um sanitizing and cleaning all the reefers and freezers up there so i'm just wondering if that might be an option for everyone in town to not stress about putting a reefer or a freezer in the the basement of the town clerk's office well we, um, we have worked with meg in the past and she's been terrific um sometimes we have overloaded her 
her refrigeration capabilities. So she's a she's a great partner in all this. But I think we've we've probably <clears throat> asked her for about as much as we really can. So well, the reason I bring that up is that as of uh, Sunday, um, six o'clock, the Hancock Hotel business, you know, Meg's business is shut down. And for the season, and maybe that would be an opportunity for everyone to take advantage of, uh, not take advantage, but ask if uh, you could be uh, using and uh, dispensing food for people in the valley. It seems very logical, uh, you know, and that's, that's just a, a suggestion, uh, you know. Well, thank you. Thank you, Robert. It sounds like um, that um, I, I'm, I'm assuming, Rob, that you would like to continue on with the um, with your request to do the uh, the town town office basement. Yes. Yeah. Okay. No. no, it's good to have options, but I think that that's um, I think we're all in, in favor of, of doing that. So, yeah. 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 All right. Cool. Thank you. Um, the, so, do you, have you got everyone here that you wanted for your? He's about to arrive. He's, oh, not has yet. no service going. Beth not Monroe, but we could start talking. But if you have more business to do, that's that's great. Well, um, we have uh, another interesting item on the agenda about the public kickoff of the high school repurposing feasibility study. Um, Vic, do you want to um, speak to that? Sure. Um, I don't know if Catherine Shankin's in the room there or not, but I can... Not in the room. Is she on the, con not on the Zoom? No, I wasn't sure if she was nice or not. Anyway, but uh, I can speak to that. Um, so Catherine and I co-chair co -chair the uh, High School Repurposing uh, Feasibility Committee, and, and we're asking the select board to approve our providing a public kickoff to the repurposing feasibility study, to which uh, we'd like to invite people from all five towns um, and, and the reason is because if this program uh, proves to be uh, viable, uh, this would provide uh, services to the whole valley, not just to Rochester. Uh, the working date for this um, public kickoff would be November 17th. We're going to ask the school board if we can hold it in the auditorium itself and live stream it so it can be highly visible and, and accessible. Um, just to uh, uh, sort of recap, you know, with the closing of the high school, uh, we now have this large vacant building in the middle of town. Uh, we need to figure out as a community what to do with it. It has tremendous uh, potential value and also significant risk. Uh, the building has the auditorium, it has lots of floor space, uh, the shops, the parking, uh, fields next door, it's in the village center. But at the same time, it has building systems that are outdated and you know, it could be millions of dollars to repair. So uh, we want to go into this uh, making sure that everybody clearly understands what the potential benefits and risks are for this, uh, this venture. And uh, you know, we don't want to saddle the town with a lot of unexpected un, uh, costs. We want to see if the uh, programs we have in mind are truly financially viable. And uh, you know, can can the rents and the uh, program income cover the operating costs? And uh, can we reasonably expect to find grant and philanthropy to cover uh, these uh, large uh, capital improvement costs? Uh, those are unknown. Uh, we don't know the answers to those yet. Uh, but uh, we've been able to uh, get a grant for a feasibility study. We have a a well-qualified uh, consultant lined up uh, to get started and we want to kick it off with a, a very public dialogue about what uh, you know what this involves what's the process what's the timeline uh, answer questions uh, take comments and uh, and do this periodically the, the, the uh, uh, timeline for this feasibility study will take us into June of 2022 and we want to have uh, periodic public briefings on how it's going uh, along the way, so that uh, you know transparency, I guess, is the is the is the word of the day. And uh, we're very interested in in uh, seeing this go forward. But, uh, we only want to do it in a way that public is fully informed about 
uh, what this project is about, what's what's the upside, what's the downside, and uh, and uh, so so this is the the kickoff to that whole process. Um, excuse me, Vic. Do you have a time for that meet evening? I mean, it's an evening thing, right? Uh, not pinned down yet. Um, as I say, we are uh, uh, still working on finalizing the, the location and the uh, uh, the date. Uh, uh, is, I think it's pretty secure. But, uh, so if I said Wednesday evening, November 17th, and you hope to have it in the auditorium? Well, um, I wouldn't want to say that without approval from the school board. So. Oh, okay. So Wednesday, <laughs> November 17th. Location to be Location to be announced. Okay. Thanks. Sorry about that. That's okay. All right. Now, anybody have any questions for Vic? I think since we uh, did support the feasibility study, um, this would be uh, something that the, a lot of people in town are, are, are wondering where does this all stand and what's the next step and who's doing what. And this would bring, bring it forward so that interested people can visit and ask questions and um, get informed about where we stand. So. Um, this will also uh, bring the fair weather consulting to the public so that he can also get feedback from yeah, the public say about that, yeah. where he should be going next so it's a two-way street that could be beneficial down the road to open avenues of discussion back and forth i, I, I could uh, just touch on the the agenda as we have it so far so we'll we will uh just briefly recount how we got to where we are with this building, give an overview of the condition of the building, uh, give an overview of what we'd like to do with the building, um, introduce the consultants and have them go through the process and the timeline, the different components to the study, and take questions. And uh, <coughs> um, as I say, we hope to have it live in the auditorium and, and live stream at the same time, so it can be as accessible as possible. May I add a comment? Um, Robert, can you hold on just one moment, please? Robert Gardner was ahead of you. Oh, I'm sorry, Robert. Uh, sure. I just wanted to first of all say thank Vic for doing all this work and for putting transparency in the foreground of something like this. I really appreciate that. I think that's very important for something as complicated as this is for everyone to understand the very best they can uh, the upside and the downside of this of this very complicated question. So at first, I want to thank Vic for that. But secondly, uh, I want to bring up something I may have mentioned before, which is that the condition of the high school and the condition of the other town buildings, which we recently found out have, have their own issues in, in your energy audit, seem to me they, they have a, a, a very much of a common theme and a common set of problems to deal with. And I wonder if there's a way to put those together in, um, or, or to consider them as one whole, either with the committee uh, or whatever, the high school building being the biggest and, and, the, and the most potentially expensive of all the town buildings. I wonder, is there a way to do that, or is that complicating things more than they need to be? Is that a question for me, or select board? I think that uh, yeah. you said so. Uh, <laughs> I think that's more of a question for you, <laughs> it, it might be something that comes into the discussion a little further down the road. Um, uh, th this, this is the, the first touch base with public. So, you know, that, that may, may come up, but we don't want to make it a point of our agenda at this point in time. Well, I may be able to make myself clear. I, I, I'm just saying that, the, to, in my mind, the town should be examining this question of, of the delayed maintenance on all these town buildings and what the potential costs are and how you're going to deal with it. Uh, it's, to me, it's a very big and complicated question, and the high school is part of that. So yeah. uh, I wish there was, uh, you know, an effort as informed and, and thorough as Vic has done for the high school for the, for the rest of the buildings. There's not. But I just see an awful lot of commonalities in the questions. How are you going to pay for it? What's the specific damage? What's the what's the gap between what the engineers are saying and what realistically might be done? You know, there's a lot of parallels in all these buildings, and I I wish there was a way that the high school would not be kind of an orphan or separated from that 
and treat it in a different way. I'm not, I don't have the answer to that. Um, but to my mind, uh, there ought to be a, a committee or something addressing this problem of deferred maintenance and building conditions because the high school is the biggest. But I won't talk the rest of the night about it. So that's, uh, I don't know what the town, uh, if it were me, if I ran the zoo there, I'd say let's have a committee and find four people who'll sit down and start to chew on this very big and long-term problem. It's a, it's a big problem. You're not going to solve it tomorrow. Um, but uh, I wonder if that could be done, if it's an, a discussion for another day or whatever. That's all I have. We have talked about that to some extent, Rob. Can you make a uh, comment? Um, so we we are kind of looking at it that way. Jeff and I have talked about it some in our times together. We you know we needed to address the whole town at once, not just the school, but it's a whole big conversation that we we need to have as a community. And I'm not sure where how that's going to materialize yet but I think it's in the air so I think that's the way we're kind of looking at it yeah and this is definitely with this public kickoff is a, it's a step in the right direction and you know this could definitely be something that can be brought up but I think the focus of this is the the feasibility study that's been you know grant money has been found to to attack this piece of the puzzle but that doesn't mean that we um, we're going to shove everything else under right, the rug. Right. Okay. Thank you. By chance, can I have a com make a comment? Go ahead, yep. Robert. Uh, I just want to respect and um, uh, congratulate uh, Patty Harvey for her uh, her words, which are very respected with regards to Vic's energy and Catherine Shakeman and Robert Gardner. Um, I believe that um, the, the, the kerfuffle with the school is all about the parents and the children of the valley. And I, I, I think it would be a great idea to have a festival and just ask the children, whether they're four, uh, fourth graders or high school kids, say, what do you guys want? And then ask the parents, what do you guys want? And then we'll, we'll have a... Uh, We'll have a conversation. If you bring in consultants and engineers, they have no uh, empathy or compassion. They, they're just looking to see how they can, from a liability standpoint, make a reference to the town to say this is what you should do. But I truly believe, and I'm sorry to go on here, there are parents in pain there are parents that are making serious educational decisions for their children. Meanwhile, we have a shop, a wood shop down there that's been um, uh, obsolete since before Irene. And that is what the children want. So it's, it's about the children. It's not about uh, engineers, consultants, and lots of money to be paid to decide what the town needs. It's up to the children and the parents of the valley. And in that, I believe that if there was, there was some kind of an open festival, to just say, hey, what are, you, uh, what are your thoughts regarding, you know, revitalizing this building? And an eight-year-old child will say, you know, I want to know how to build motors, or I want to know how to do um, so uh, children will be invited to this public kickoff, whether they come in person or on Zoom. So they they would have their chance to have their input. Well, I think the I, I think that the the disposition of the topic of the meeting should be we want to know we want to hear from the children and the parents of the valley, not a consultant from wherever or an engineer from wherever to. Um, juristic what we should do with the building structurally i know it's in, in a major trouble but that building is is a sacred place where uh, so well, many things the, the um you know uh, you we get your point and um then that that is a really a big point of this public kickoff the public aspect of it not just hiring a consultant to sit in his office and make his advice but to bring him here to meet the community and those people that are 
that are concerned and have input. So it's, um, I think that we're, we're headed in, um, you know, I, I, I sense that we're all in favor of this, uh, supporting this public kickoff meeting. And am I correct there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which, so. We have to figure out a solution to yeah, this. Yeah, and it's complicated and forward, for sure. So. Yeah. And you're right, Robert. The more input, the better. Well, you know, Dune, <coughs> being endearing and compassionate is a very important thing. And, um, you know, forget taxpayers and all the stuff we're dealing with with the stress of this building. It's like, let the children speak, let the parents speak, and then they'll decide what we're going to do with the building. All right. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Doom. Yep. Um, so, not everybody here yet? Not quite. Well, it's okay. It's close enough, so. It's we close can, enough? We can start. All right. Well, if you if might as well have your whole contingency here if you want to. We still got some more stuff yeah, to go got, through. Yeah. Yeah. So, the. Um, Consortium Planning Grant Resolution. Um, there you go. This year up, Sandy. Thank you. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where I'm supposed to put it. I think so. Yeah, I just put my back in my head. Okay. I don't know this how is, that is. This is for a very tall person. <laughs> uh, so, um, what you, um, I, I sent the, um, the, dot, the paperwork to Dune a few days ago. Um, this is an application for a uh, municipal planning grant. Um, we have, we have I, one of the reasons I came tonight is because we have two, and I'm trying to make sure you don't get confused. So the, um, the planning commission is doing its own small grant that, um, that um, Dan has, has um, sent you a, a resolution to support um, to do um, Update to the zoning um, to come into to come into conformance with the, the recently adopted readopted plan. But in addition to that, there is a seven town consortium um, that's being led by Two Rivers um, to look at housing issues in in our region. We have we have a housing crisis all over Vermont, and particularly in in the area that's covered by Two Rivers. So seven towns together are applying for a grant to study housing. The important thing for you to know is that it will cost the town nothing, that particular one. Um, and, and I'm here tonight to um, ask your support for the, the we need to have a sign off for, the, uh, for a municipal resolution to add our, add our name to that particular um, mm -hmm. grant application. Mm -hmm. I'd move to uh, yeah. improve that, make that resolution. Can I make a comment yeah. with regard to that? <laughs> Robert Frank. Sure, what do you got, Robert? Keep it well, short. Hey, Frank, how are you? Pretty good. Uh, I've good. got major concerns for uh, people that live in Rochester that are still waiting for the minutes of the planning board October 5th, 2021, planning and zoning with, with regards to Quarry Hill. And... Um, the former state representative is now saying she's got a grant for something else. Well, I think the minutes of the planning or so, the So, um, wait a minute, Robert, we're, this is your, not um, agenda. this is not what we're talking about. You're, you're, um, you're on a tangent here. This, that's something that you want to bring up in the public comment afterwards, but right now we're talking about this particular, um, resolution. So well, if, you wanna, if, you, if you want to bring this up at the in the public comments, then that that would be the appropriate time to do this because this is not exactly what we're talking about right now. Thank you, dude. Yeah, yeah. All right. So um, I think that before um, Robert spoke, we were just agreed to um, um, adopt this resolution for the planning grant, consortium planning grant, and join these other six towns. I yes. Yeah. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And then we can sign that right here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Sandy. Yeah. All right. And now. We've got everybody here to um, the Murray um, Farm Solar Project. 
So do you want to um, introduce your, your topic here? Yeah, Sorry, let me get the mic on. Yeah, might as well go to the mic. Yeah. I'm Don Murray, and uh, my wife Jean is here, my daughter Tay and Tara. Donna's not here, she's down in New York. Um, but um, we bought our, our land, our farm, back in, well, 1988, so we've had it for 33 years. We bought the, um, that's at the end of West Young Drive, we bought the property on Bethel Mount Road 11 years ago. And uh, <clears throat> we always intended this to be our home, but uh, we were taking care of my mother, my mother-in-law, and three aunts who have now passed away that occupied many years of our time, but we're here, we've been here almost two years now, full time. Um, I've been involved with solar for a long time. Um, I built a house uh, designed for solar back in 1977, 78. Um, in 1979, I was on uh, all news radio station in Boston uh, every day, three times a day, every weekday, uh, talking about everything from, from weather stripping to global warming, including Seoul. Um, so I was talking about global warming over 40 years ago. It's um, been my dream to have solar for a long time, and I actually installed a solar system on a friend's barn uh, a few years ago. And um, We use our farm, it's agricultural land, and we grow hay on it, uh, which we use and we don't really sell. I have all the equipment from it tractor to a baler to do that, um, and uh, we really wanted to have solar. We put some on our buildings, but they need roofs, and this is not a practical uh, solution right now, and um, it's not enough for what we need for our two houses there. Our daughter, Donna, has a house that she bought recently, and another one that she rents, so it's really for those houses. So we really wanted to put solar, and uh, we put a lot of consideration into uh, where we put it, and my daughter and, and Jonathan will talk more about that. But um, we care a lot about the land, uh, we care a lot about the appearance of the solar. It's, when I see solar uh, panels, I think, wow, somebody cares, somebody's doing something about the environment, and it means a lot to me. And um, I'm sorry that some people find it to be an eyesore, but to me it's it's like caring about the future <coughs> of the earth. So that's basically all I had to say. So, uh, good evening. I'm sorry I'm a bit late. Excuse me, do, do, do it's Martha. I'm wondering, um, do they need to get approval from the board to do this? I didn't know that they did or if they did or not. Uh, there's residential scale solar is exempt from local zoning laws, so I think well, that okay, that's this I this this here is a um, basically just um, providing information to the town okay. about what your intent is. And, but um, um, Jonathan, is it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, sorry for my tardiness. There was there was yeah. fog on Rochester Gap. No, it's over better safe than sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. So uh, the reason I'm Jonathan Nelson, I represent Murray Farm Solar as the developer uh, on the project. So, um, so what we're here for actually this evening, and I think there was a letter that was sent over to you, a, a sample letter from the Board of um, board Selectmen and Planning Board in Wardsboro, Vermont. And I have a very similar letter from Wyndham. We're, I'm doing a couple of small projects, not unlike Murray Farm Solar down in Wardsboro and Wyndham, which is in the West River Valley. It's towards, towards Brattleboro. And um, uh, I personally own several solar projects in New Hampshire, and I, I build many megawatts of them uh, out of state. Um, so this is a very small scale, little, really community solar project. The energy would stay here in, in, in Rochester. It really would go to the Murray family. Um, and what we need and what we've received in Wyndham and Wardsboro is what's called a letter of support from the Board of Selectmen. And it's, it's very key um, to the project. Uh, both to have support from the, uh, I believe here it would be the Three Rivers Commission, um, the Planning Board, and the Board of Selectmen. And that's for what is called preferred site status. That's what we would be seeking, um, a de to have the site designated as a preferred site. Now, um, economically what this does to the project is it makes it 
really viable. Energy, energy is going up generally, and solar panels tend to track the price of energy. You, you don't realize that you're, Vermont, New Hampshire, New England is going to get slammed by natural gas prices this winter and into next year. And natural gas is really going up. Solar panel prices, unfortunately, are going up. Uh, everything's going up. Steel prices have gone up 300%. Racking for solar panels is, is, is skyrocketing, believe it or not. And uh, it would be critical to this project's economics to receive what's called preferred site status. So that gives it parity with the um, Green Mountain Power's net metering uh, payback. If, if you don't get that, Green Mountain Power will literally pay to the Murrays less than what they would charge them for the energy, believe it or not. And I have this problem in New Hampshire uh, as well um, with, the, with the utilities. So preferred site status really avoids this problem. It avoids what is effectively a tax on solar power, believe it or not. And it's, it's very necessary. Um, it, it's really, um, it's something that, uh, it, it, it needs to be done with the project. It needs to be done with all these small scale projects, especially with energy prices skyrocketing and prices of solar panels and steel. Um, and it just brings it to parity, really, for compensation for the Murrays. Um, and the uh, part of that citing criteria is why did you put it in? Why did you put it where you put it? Um, why why should this be a preferred site? So the Murrays, believe it or not, hired a wetlands consultant. I had them hire that, um, and he went through several sites on the Murray farm. They own quite a bit of land, and the in the back of the property is there's an issue with prime agricultural soil. You know, there, there's still hanging going on there. Um, solar is important, but so is food, and so is agricultural activity and the heritage of that. Uh, that's not going on in the site that it is currently being selected. There's also not a wetlands issue where it's being selected, where there was into the back. There's, those might be, look like fields. They are also slow, sort of swampy, and the state considers that to be a wetland in back there. And there's, there's parts of that field that's, that's all wetland in the back of the Murray Farm over on West Young Road over there. Um, and the third most critical piece is utility interconnection. The old line going on along West Long Young Drive is an old single phase line, and those poles, I swear, and I got a pretty good radar for this, I'll bet you those poles are from the 40s. And, I, and I've got a few of them in New Hampshire with the co-op that are from the 40s that are still standing. Those, that line and that poles are, those, those are very problematic for an interconnection. Um, you, you, you know, Green Mountain Power might say, yeah, you have to rebuild the whole line or something. And uh, you know, put in all new poles, it gets really expensive and it just becomes not economically viable. In the front of the property, there's a relatively new single phase Green Mountain line. Yeah. Uh, <gasps> and, uh, you know, that's, that's another technical uh, um, uh, consideration to this. So the siting criteria really pointed to where it's being proposed now. It's not just some, some arbitrary um, selection. It, it was done for good reason and good cause. And the first site that we actually looked at was in the back on West Yellow Drive where no one would see it and nobody would likely complain or say anything. And it just, for the siting criteria that was there, which is wetlands, prime ag soils, and interconnection, it really pointed to the front where, it, where it's being proposed now, um, which is a good site. Um, it meets all the criteria and um, this is a relatively small scale project. Um, it's a, um, it's really only a few times larger than a residential project, believe it or not. And um, so, what is the the dividing line between a residential scale and non-residential scale? Do you know? In my opinion, I think, well, actually, the state law would speak to this as well. If you're at 15 kilowatts AC, around 15 kilowatts, I think that's where they cut it off. Around 15 kilowatts. This is 50, and 50 is really. The, the, it's still considered to be the, the, the least intrusive of a ground mount. It's, it's the, the lowest um, permitting requirements. And anything, anything after 50, so if you go to 51, 52, 55, and you do what we're doing in Wardsboro and Wyndham, which are small scale projects, the permitting is really considered more mediums, um, 
uh, medium uh, scale. Uh, and then, of course, if you go over 500 kilowatts, it's, 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 it's a whole other different scale of, of things. So um, it's 50 for a couple of reasons. One, the Murrays want to use this power and virtually net meter it for the properties they have here in Rochester. They want to keep it local power. This isn't some massive commercial enterprise. Um, and also the permitting at some point, when you go over 50, it, it, it's just extreme. You, you basically have to get a law firm involved. The minutes it, are up. Um, so is my time expired or? No. Yes. 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 Your presentation. no yeah. asking him to speak. Yeah. Uh, um, Robert, the select board is asking him to continue with this, so I'm going to mute your line for right now. Uh, Sorry. Oh, no, no, no worries. Um, so uh, that's the reason that it's cited the way it is. That's the reason that it's the size that it is. It's meant to stay lower. Um, it's not meant to be an obst you know, ob obstruction or a, uh, a uh, hideous item on the landscape. Um, and... Uh, um, we've received actually letters of support in Windham and Wardsboro for much larger size projects in fields. Um, and the Rochester Board of Selectmen, of course, can make its own determination as to whether they want to have a letter of support. Windham and, Wards and, Windham and Wardsboro Board of Selectmen were very supportive of the renewable energy projects there. They, um, they have citing criteria from, from their regional council that mm -hmm. shows um, you know, that those sites were secondary preferred sites or primary preferred sites. I imagine Rochester has this as well. I would do that. I was wondering if you had a chance to, to review those maps, because we do have, um, and they actually, um, well, I don't know if you've seen them. I mentioned them to um, on the phone earlier, and the, um, the back field actually is, uh, is a primary, you know, prime is, is, is a prime spot. Yeah. And yeah. it's, and I was just curious if that, that one of the criteria would be to optimize the efficiency of the, the solar installed. That seems that would be an important consideration. I'll, I'll tell you, one of the things they didn't put on those maps is they didn't consider interconnection. And, and that's, a, that's a really old single phase yeah. line there. Yeah. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you, I did a small project in New Hampshire. I literally had a three phase line right across the street. And I mean, you know, the width of a street right in front of the project, right in front of a piece of property. Liberty Utilities charged me $16,000 to go, to put one pole in and cross over a street. And that was just, that was just to cross literally from pole here to pole here across the street, $16,000. To go and rebuild the line in West Young Drive, you don't want, the, even on a single phase project, you, you'd be looking into hundreds of thousands of dollars. I mean, and, and Green Mountain Power, because they don't want a burden on the rate payers, if you put a solar project in, they make you pay the full cost of the rebuilding of any upgrades to their to their infrastructure. You bear it as the developer and the owner, because they don't want it fairly enough going to the rate base, which is fair enough. So, unless you're putting an enormous project on West Young Drive, um, which would not be supported, I don't think, by that single phase line, um, anyway, I don't think that would be a viable spot, to be quite honest with you. And, and then there's ag soils and wetlands up there as well. And we checked it, and we have the wetlands maps on it, from the mm -hmm. wetland delineator on that. Um, so uh, that's, that's really what we would be hoping for, would be a consideration for a letter of support, and would be asking the planning board as well. Um, I think Don is concerned with global warming. I think most people are. Um, these little small projects like this, I think uh, Vermont is more favor favors more of these smaller scale projects than these monsters, um, and and that's what really this fits the bill. It's a smaller little guy. It's a community solar project. It's local power. It's people trying to do their small part to maybe make this a better world for our grandchildren. Um, so. So are you still in the phase now of, of seeking a, a certificate of public good from the yes. from the regulatory? Commission? Yes. In fact, yeah. we um, there was a deadline, unfortunately, September the first, where the rates dropped, and because we did not get the certificate of or, or letter of support from the board of selectmen and the planning board, well, we I will think got to get the certificate of public good from the state first. It's no. It's actually we should have came to you first. 
hmm. believe it or not. Um, and it's still pending. The application is pending. Um, the CPG to the to the PUC. It's been filed for. Um, there's been a butter notifications. There's been a, a permit package, and that's in the works. Um, the the thing that we would be waiting for really would have been that letter of support from the planning board, board of selectmen, and the regional commission, the Three Rivers Commission. And we should have did that months ago. Um, I would have to take some blame for that because I thought that you could do it afterwards. It, it, it's a it's a very confusing process, I have to say, the, the permitting process. Um, we can go forward and we are going forward with the CPG application. Um, but it, it, it really, we, we would need the letter of support as well. It's, it's kind of dual tracked at this point. So it, it's been filed for. Yeah. It's been filed for. It was, it was a, it, thank God it wasn't, a, it wasn't a larger project because I know my two larger projects in the West River. You ended 10 minutes ago. Uh, um, Robert, this is a, this is not a public comment. This is an item on the agenda where he's presenting information about the project. So that's why he's going beyond the 10 minute speaking. Yeah. Five well, I would, I, would, I would recommend that maybe those minutes that we just spent listening to, you know, solar energy and marketing, we should focus on the school in Rochester and- <laughs> Robert, we're gonna mute you now because you're, you're, you're going off topic here. Yeah. Okay. With the board's um, permission, excuse me, June, could yeah. I just ask one quick question? Yeah, go ahead, Martha. Um, could you give me the name of the gentleman who spoke, the installer? And um, Jonathan, also, what's your last name? Yes, uh, Jonathan Nelson. Jonathan, Jonathan Nelson. and what was the last name? Nelson. 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 Nelson, okay. And I really don't remember, where is this Murray pro property located in Rochester? It's uh, right at the intersection of when you go up Bethel Mountain Road, when you turn right to head up up the mountain, it's right to the left. Gary okay, Rice's so old at, uh, left of, So if I said it left of... And, Gary uh, Rice's old place. Um, okay. She doesn't know that. She did. Okay. No, no. West Young Road. Yep. Um, did Did you have more that you wanted? So, to? If, yeah. um, so in terms of permitting, the if you um, we're going through it uh, as well for our other two projects in, in Southern Vermont that I'm the developer for, and um, I, I tell you the permitting process, even for these little guys. I think the the printing bill from Staples was something like five hundred dollars. That's how much paperwork mm -hmm. we had to do. It, it was un, uh, unimaginable, and, and fortunately, I have the backing of um, a very good friend of mine that's willing to do these small projects. It's a very credible developer, uh, and he's just had the wherewithal to 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 do this. Otherwise, most people would have just quit uh, because the permitting is just uh, it's amazing. It, it's, it's a lot to be honest with you. It's it's even sound studies, believe it or not. It's it's everything. So um, it, it's amazing. Um, you have any anybody have any questions for or are you done? The only thing I would suggest right now would be to talk to Green Mountain Power to see what they're going to allow you to do for a hitch up, because that's a pretty small wire size up there and whether or not that'll support what you're trying to do or not is going to be up to them. Yeah. So yeah, I would suggest you do that first and find out what you can do up there with what you're planning or even thinking about. So you cross that bridge. And I would also suggest, personally, I think you need to, this is kind of a land use type of thing. It's not really what our jurisdiction is that I feel anyway. No, I think that this should start at the planning it board. It should start at the planning commission yeah. and get their approval and also go through the Two Rivers people to see if they support this project. And then if you need us to give you a letter and everything works out that way, then we would follow suit with whatever the planning commission came up with in Two Rivers. That's the way I view that. So, so to your point, the uh, GMP <coughs> line, and I went through this in a number of small lines in, in right. down south. Um, it, the, the one on, uh, is it Bethel Mountain Road? It's Bethel Mountain Road, that line. Mm -hmm. That one's okay. 
That's West. the same. That's the same wire size as what's on West Young Road. I is can it, tell you that. Yes. Is it really? And in the past, what they've always done is asked you to upgrade a one pole situation, possibly. Yeah. For where they mount their their equipment. Yeah. And that's the, you know, having worked there, I kind of know a little bit about that. So, um, I would suggest you go through their planners to see what they would allow you to do. Well, actually, I have spoken to them. They, they seem to be, uh, they seem to be okay with the, with the West Young, uh, uh, the uh, Bethel Mountain Road line there. Yeah. The poles are okay there. Those actually should be moved out of the field. I've, I've been told that they would not actually be averse to moving those poles out of the field and putting them along the side of the road because they have servicing issues right. um, on those poles in the field. And uh, they they would have preferred that those be taken out. We had a discussion actually that went to the to the Com people and to the Green Mountain Power, and they'd be willing to move those and put new poles at their expense, um, not at the solar project's expense, to uh, right along Bethel Mountain Road right there. So right. we the Murrays are, were concerned about making too much of a fuss on that because if you start moving wires and moving poles, then you're going to get into more tree cutting which isn't on us, it's on the utility, to be perfectly honest with you. Right. But they don't want to, you know, make too much of a fuss and have this, you know, have a lot of unintended consequences start spilling over. And we end up with more tree cutting and then, you know, all these kinds of environmental issues uh, that, you know, as stewards of the land, the, the Murrays care about their trees, is what it amounts to. And, and Can I make a comment? Robert, um, hold on just one second, please. Rob Gardner was ahead of you, and we're waiting here in the room for... Your turn. So hold on, just one second, please. So to to the other point, um, the Three Rivers Commission is going to want to see the support from Board of Selectmen and Planning Board before they look at it. And we we did this the reverse way. What you just said, go to the regional first, and they said, well, normally we don't look at this, but we know the project. We've all talked about it, and we're going to okay it as long as it's subject to the Planning Board and the Board of Selectmen. So they usually kick it back to you guys. And they want uh, they they want us to start with the planning board and the board of selectmen. It, that's from West River Regional. Maybe Three Rivers does it differently, but that's my understanding from going going through this a couple of times earlier this year. So, um, do you have any knowledge of that, Sandy? Being on the planning commission? No, I, I, I didn't. I didn't know that they were looking for um, for a, a site approval from us. Our understanding was that our jurisdiction was limited to setbacks and such things. So you would be on the planning board? Yeah. Oh, okay. So. So if it, um, so I guess we'll need to do a little research and figure out what is that um, break between residential scale versus a larger scale, um, whether that's 15 or, or 50. And, and to what extent, where are our zoning laws, where, whether we even have any say about it, you know. Yeah, um, I saw a hand in the, in the back there. Yeah, when well, John's done, I like to say a few words. No, okay. And we've got one person and on the someone computer, online. that's yeah, why okay. you can just so I'd you know. like to speak next as one of the guests after Jonathan's done. All right. Thank you. Do you have more to say? Oh, no. I'm fine. I've taken enough time. No, then go for it. <laughs> Hey, Rob Gardner, you're on my radar. We're just going to finish up in the room here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Kagan Murray. I live at 259 West End Drive. Um, and just wanted to talk a little bit about the project and appreciate what Jonathan and my father have said. And I've grown up hearing about solar and have gotten to experience it more on a personal level working for the same solar company that Jonathan works for. And um, we have put in enormous amount of thought and effort in our family with Jonathan on every aspect of it and where it should go. Um, and working with Jonathan, he is, takes every effort to not cut down any tree that can possibly be cut down. His own solar project has a walnut tree that hangs over it, and he's losing a lot of money a year because he's keeping the tree, and we have the same values. And so we have spent a lot of time trying to find the best place. And we hired for almost $500 the wetlands delineator that they talked about. Um, and he looked at all the, all the sites. 
and um, one of the sites was along Bethel Mountain Road, but in, involved removing, it was completely wooded, and removing all of the trees. And as a family, we didn't want to do that. Um, the other sites, what our prefer favorite site was on West Young Drive, it was too wet. The other sites are farmlands, and, and just to be honest, we value the farmland. Um, we have not utilized, it's being hayed, but we haven't utilized it to its full capacity. Um, you know, we're, my family is talking about crops and, and animals on it. We spent many years traveling back and forth taking care of my older relatives, so we couldn't, you know, we had to be back and forth constantly, but that's not the case anymore. Um, and the wetlands delineator said that, that farmland is not a preferred site. Of course, wetlands are not a preferred site in any endangered species or whatever. He picked this site, and I can show anybody the map I have of all the sites that he looked at. Um, he said that this was the preferred site, and it's also better for all the practical reasons that, that Jonathan mentioned. Um, and, and just going back to being stewards of land, when we bought it when I was a kid years ago, um, Richie Curtis said to us that the barn was built, and he has his name written on it, that, that they built the barn there because it was on the wetland. They valued every square foot of the farmland, and they did not want the barn to be to take up any space of usable land, so they built on the wetland. We're paying for that now by a barn that's sinking and needs a lot of work. Um, and we bought the, the land. It was about to be developed with over 10 houses, and we put a backup offer and got it. We treasure every bit of it, and we don't want to put the solar project on farmland. And, and that's what the wetland delineator said to us, that this was the best spot. Um, so we're trying to be good stewards of the land. Um, we also value have it not be in anybody's vision or, or not, you know, something that's an eyesore. Um, I think there is something said for, you know, as you approach Rochester, if you see a little glimpse of it, it's kind of a gateway to Rochester and kind of speaks for the town. And I think um, that people would be proud of, of seeing some of it. But we took great consideration in, for the Blaines and what they might see. One of the sites was oh, more right in front of their house or down toward Kinley's house. We X that off. It's it's actually by our house. It's you know I know that they wrote a letter of objection, but it's it's their view where they look in the mountains, the valley. It's not in that direction. The, if they were to look at our house, that's in the direction of the solar. It's not. They would not see it in the direction of their view. Um, so. We, we took that into great consideration. We've told them that we, there's a row of trees there already, that we put some evergreen trees on. We're also in the process of, of doing research on a low profile solar that Jonathan has built uh, several of these. Um, I have as well, where the solar is very close to the ground. So the, the bottom, it's only maybe a foot and a half off the ground or foot, and the top is maybe three feet. It's low profile, it's not much less visible. Um, we're in the process of investigating about reverters, so it, it sends power back through the panels to melt snow, because that's the problem around here, with, it would get covered with snow. So having it be something that is uh, not uh, visibly objectionable to people is something very important to us, for our neighbors, but also for us, because it's directly right near our house. And we picked that, that spot for all the practical reasons, and we're the ones bearing the the visual disturbance, the most of having it by our house. Um, so those are basically the reasons um, that, that we picked that spot. And um, I don't know if anybody had any questions. Or I, I think my sister wanted to really add something in. Hi, I'm, I'm Tara Murray. I just want to say 30 seconds. Um, if there's something, one negative about our family is we care a lot about other people and we put a lot of time into into that concern and I personally was involved in hours and hours of discussions mostly about the blames and not wanting them to be upset before we even told them anything about it that was our biggest concern and honestly that was and so as much as they're talking about solar being a positive I want you to know that aesthetic is also very important to our family and we don't love solar in our face we think it's a nice thing but we didn't intentionally put it there so people would see it and we like she said it's not in their view of the mountains it's more in their view if they look at our house. I know they'll see something, and anybody who drives by will see something. But we've done our best to move it as away from the view as possible, closest to our house as possible, and done our best to do that. And 
um, I, you know, I, we had like a family vote where to put it, and I wanted to put it down Bethel Mountain Road, but it required tons of tree removal. Everyone was like, no, we're not cutting down hundreds of trees. So I just wanted to know that there was enormous thought put into it. So um, we can open it up to now to um, some of the public comments, response. You want to do in-house first? Yeah, let's do in-house okay. first and then move on to Zoom. Okay. So uh, Mark, you wanted to speak? Sure. Before I get started. Just to give you an idea, this is the scale of the solar project that we're considering here tonight. Um, and I say this with a certain caveat because as we know everything on the internet is 100% true but I did do uh, some research as to what the size of a 50 kilowatt solar installation is and I've also got to do a little homework on my own here uh, 50 kilowatt is 100, approximately 157 panels 330 watts per panel is pretty much the industry standard right now. Uh, and according to Paradise Energy, for what it's worth, that comes to roughly 3,061 square feet of disturbed space. Just to give you a point of reference, that's roughly 50% bigger than our house. Um, common size solar panel is a 330 watt. It has an area of 18 square feet from the Panasonic company. Uh, so we're talking some fairly good sized disturbed space. Um, question I had, and this is going back from a cell tower installation I had some input on a few years back, is there a regulation that requires owners to post a bond or surety to ensure the removal of the system if it fails or is no longer economically viable? The answer is no. It's not required for net metering under PUC Rule 5.900. It's only required on installations of one megawatt or larger. The other question I had was, what is the zoning of the Murray property? And June, you can probably answer this better because you're on planning and zoning board. Well, I'm not on the zone. That's the administrator. I'm not well, on okay. the board. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. so. What, 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 what is the zoning Con like? Conservation residential. Conservation okay, residential. Okay, so it's residential. Uh, as per the 2016 Vermont Guide to Residential Solar, systems over 14.3 kilowatt are not considered residential. This is a commercial scale installation. Um, net metering rules in Vermont encourage the use of sites not suitable for other development and discourages but does not prohibit the siting on other properties, and that's from the Vermont Public Interest Research Group. Uh, installation of solar facilities is administer administered under Act 248, which under is under the authority of the Vermont Public Utilities Commission. Act 250 and local ordinances are not applicable. That's from MSK attorneys up in Burlington. Uh, regarding aesthetic mitigation, it's required under PUC Rule 5.8, and in addition, Act 248B1 requires compliance with local screening ordinances, which cannot be more stringent than for any other type of development. Does the town of Rochester have such an ordinance in place? I don't believe so. Not that I'm aware okay. of. Okay. No. Um, and really, that's about it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've been involved in some solar stuff since I was in junior high school. I'm an industrial electrician. I do a lot of different stuff. Um, I'm not against solar. But I think there needs to be a better, more consideration given to other places to cite it. And really... That's about all I've got. All right. If you have Thank any you. questions for me, I'll try to answer them as best as I can. No, thank you. Thank you for thank the you. information. Um, Kenley? Hi, my name is Kenley Tenner. I'm also an abutting neighbor, and I just want to uh, 
register an opposition to that project being cited where it is at the moment. I think it'd be intrusive on both the immediate neighbors and people coming and going through our town. I do support solar for the future, but I hope you guys will look closer at the possibility of the back 40, maybe even a, a bigger project or a joint project with the uh, power initiatives that are going on right now. But uh, I'd rather not have it right out there on the road. That's all I got. So, um, you had Robert Gardner in Yep, mind? Robert Gardner, if you have something. Yeah, I, yeah I, I, it's just a kind of an effort to understand the scope of this thing. So, I have solar on my house, on the, on the house and on the barn roof. It's 30 panels. So, uh, how many panels are you guys talking about? I know what 30 panels are. 200. 200. No. So this, 200 or 180? the energy density is important. So the prior gentleman is mistaken in his assertion that it's 330 watts. I just put 4,200 panels on a roof, uh, and I used 4,100 panels on a roof. 4,100 panels on a roof. Yes, on and a, roof. Then a Lipton T Corporation's roof. A big roof. Yeah. And <laughs> that was those were 405 watts. And that's, that's old by industry standards. Mm -hmm. I was actually looking at the new 540 watt panels. So the impact is, it's half of what was just stated. And that's just the way it is. So this is old information and perhaps incorrect information on area of disturbance. So, um, so how many so panels are you talking about then with the newer higher wattage? 75 kW DC divided by 540 of the latest you know, most efficient monocrystalline back reflecting panel that will get a benefit from snow reflection. Yep. Yep. So you do the math, it would be, well, you must it would be know a number about half of, half know, of the 200 sure. roughly. Yeah. Maybe a few less than that. Yeah. So, so maybe a hundred. Maybe a hundred. A little so less maybe. The Murray project is 200 panels. Did I hear correctly? No, or no, please? no. We've just um, determined this it would be around a hundred panels and are these the standard size or I mean when you, you say the panels new, that's relative to how big the panel is you could have a panel yeah, as big are, as this room. These are the newer more efficient panels so whether it, with each one percent increase of efficiency you get a much higher energy density so the industry wants to go obviously to higher energy densities and smaller footprints right, mm -hmm. right. It, it's better right. for everything yeah. right. it's better for your racking it's better for everything installation um, so 330 is a project that would have been maybe three years ago I would have done. Um, I actually used 330 watt panels on a couple of my projects in New Hampshire with a low profile installation and you can hide the visual aesthetic impact of that with a six foot vinyl PVC fence. I put it right on the main street or, or one of the main thoroughfares and on a property I own and I've not had a single person say anything about it. In fact, I've had a lot of people tell me that looks Fine, or we don't even see it there. Okay. So, you know. so Robert Gardner, did he answer your question? We're looking at about a hundred panels. Yeah. Yeah, and which would be like three houses. Use so three panels on one house is a. All right. Thank you. Just want to add. Can I make a comment. It would be approximately sixty feet by ninety feet. <coughs> Maybe fifty Whoa. feet by. Hold on, Robert. Seventy-five feet square foot. That it would take up. It's very small. So say that again. Approximately 50 feet by 75 or 80 feet. And that would be three sets. Yeah, yeah. So it depends on your racking. Again, if we used a really ultra low profile, which you know I've used successfully, um, it's it's going to be lower and it's going to spread it out a little bit, but it's going to be much lower. I mean, it's literally the only problem there is the snow around here. That's, yes. that's the problem yeah. with that one. Right. It technically can be done. Mm -hmm. I've done cool. it. So. That's okay. And uh, on Zoom, Robert Franks. All right, Robert Franks, now's your turn. Hey, thank you, Dune. Hey, I wanted to ask the gentleman that is um, uh, promoting and marketing his uh, solar panel array down at the Murray Farm. It's a simple question. What per foot does it cost to run electricity proper electricity to a household. Is he still online and can he answer that question? Um, I, I'm not um, 
commercially, uh, it's extra extraordinarily expensive to run. I can't hear that person. You have to, you have to yeah. talk to the mic. He's coming to the mic, Robert. Just one second. Uh, yes, Robert. Can you hear me? I can, I can hear you. Yes. So your question, uh, cost of residential line extensions, I guess, is what you're saying. The question is, the proper electricity delivered to homes in Vermont, what is the price per foot? Uh, well, normally electricity is priced in kilowatts, cents per kilowatt hour. I didn't ask you that question. No, I asked you. I don't know the answer then. I guess I don't know the answer. Well, if you're, if you're developing solar panels up on the Mary Farm, and you don't know the answer to the price per foot of electricity provided by the state or the country, um, I think you should be dismissed. <laughs> I, I respectfully disagree, as I don't quite understand your question, but uh, I, I respect your, your, your opinion. I'll put it forward to you again. Uh, no, this, we've, we've heard it twice now, Robert. It's... it's um, your, your, your question, I assume, is how expensive would it be to improve the line to move the, the array somewhere else? Is that what you're getting at? No, no I'm asking for the, the <laughs> okay. ground rules of electricity in the United States and the price per foot right. of tonight. So, I, so um, I guess we don't have the answer to that question here. Well, if you don't have the answer to that question, the uh, this whole discussion is mute. Uh, as you well, yeah. thank you, thank you for your opinion. You want to um, mute? Yeah. Um, is there anyone else on Zoom that has a comment on this? There are no hands raised, no so hands, I think we're good. No hands raised. Can I say one really quick thing? Sorry, just sitting here. I don't. I don't uh, breathe solar and drink it every day like that. I don't understand it. So sitting here, I'll make sure maybe other people don't understand something, which I wouldn't if I hadn't been listening to them for days. Um, that we, I believe this is correct, that if we did it in a field on agricultural land, we couldn't get preferred site. And that would mean... Um, that's not necessarily true, actually. Okay. Um, I, don't, I don't think that... Um, I, we were told by the, by the engineer, the civil engineer, wetlands delayed, that agricultural land is not considered preferred. And the problem is that if we don't get preferred site, we can still do the project, but we'll just get a lower percentage from from the, the electric company, which you know we're hoping to use any benefit of this to preserve our barns, preserve our property, and to make things better on our property or in town. So it's not like we're trying to, you know, take advantage of anybody. Um, we just want the product mm -hmm. to be more viable, mm -hmm. that's all. Yeah, I guess I'd never heard about this um, necessity for a dedicated preferred site because I don't remember having to get that when I put the solar on on my roof. It's, uh, Maybe it was too small no. to have that. Yeah, it would have been too oh, small. Too, too small. small. Okay. Under fifteen, it would have been. Not um, can I make yeah. a comment? If it's the something answer. different than what you said before, you could yes. The answer to my comment is sixteen dollars per foot. Uh, run so, all right. Proper. Good. Good. So you knew that. Thank you. Um, so I guess we're, um, you know, this is an informational meeting. I would encourage you to get back on the agenda with the, the planning board. You're on the agenda for the last meeting, but that didn't things didn't work out, I guess, for that. Um, do you have one more? Yeah, I just wanted to quickly add, um, I was just going to say what you said. I, I, we apologize. We didn't know that it was on the agenda. And so, um, you know, we apologize. We would never have something um, on the schedule that we were not there for. So it was unknown to us. So it will be on either in the first meeting in November or in December. I spoke with Sandy about that. Okay. Um, and I just wanted to ask again that we're hoping that you guys can write the letter of support. Is if if we meet all the criteria and it is a preferred site based on the rules and all the regulations that we're following and the, all the information that we have, I think that we are entitled to to that letter 
And again, it doesn't preclude us or enable us to do it. It just makes it more financially viable and help, like my sister said, support an old farm where we're, we're trying to preserve literally the barns that were, that were built on wetlands and do other things. And so, um, you know, just ask for, for your support. Thank okay. You. Yeah, I guess we're, we're, that's not a decision we can make right now. We have to, this is a new presentation, so we'll have to, you know, do due diligence and, um, you know. Would, would, it, would it help you to talk with the select board at Wardsboro or Wyndham? Not, not really. I think it's more, um, I mean, that's, that's probably a whole different situation. We're, we're, it's, um, I have two questions. We've got someone in the room here, Robert. Um, hold on just one minute. Yep. Hi. I'm, I'm Jean Murray. I'm Don's wife and the mother of mm -hmm. three girls and grandmother of Mariah and friend of Jonathan. And um, I just couldn't let time go by without me saying that um, we've, you know, we've, we've owned this for over 30 years and and have dreamt, I came, I came, grew up in Dorchester, inner city, um, just dreamt of going to a farm so long. And I'm, I'm kind of like the research person um, who in, has, has done stuff about crops that we want to grow. We were talking about, um, we went to a solar thing five years ago about growing hemp um, for rope and other things like that. I mean, we've, we haven't done that because of health issues and so forth. It's plagued our family for a while. But we seem to be past that, hopefully. And um, also, um, I've done research on, on different animals. We have two barns, um, and we want to we want to make it a farm, the way it's supposed to be and the way it was. And um, we use every bit of hay that we cut. Um, and my husband cuts. He's got all sorts of hay rakes and all sorts of things that we have. Um, we use every bit of it, and we've sold some. <coughs> we we use it for all different things. We have a, we've had events on the farm. Um, <coughs> You know, weddings and different things that we've done, and you know, it's 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 a nice um, it's a nice um, I don't know, a place that that shows what I think of what what I think of Vermont to be, and I I love to have people come and see it. We rent the the the, the, the house in the front, and we invite people to come and, and see the farm, and I, I think it's it's a good it's a good thing, and I'm sorry we we. We hate the idea of putting the panels where we don't like them. I mean, it's like, I wish I could take this of this and that of that and put it all together and make the best, but we can't. The, um, the, the wetlands delineator looked around. He said, he, you know, by, by just looking at vegetation that grows, if it's the most prominent thing that grows in the field, then he knows what kind of, what kind of water that is. And that this was out, this was out, this was out. We were shocked. And so we had no, very little choice in the end. Um, actually, we didn't have any choice at the end, so that was it. And so, um, and and we don't like it. You know, basically, pretty much in front of, you know, at least a quarter in front of, of our house in front. We're trying to make it as small as can. We're going to spend more money as much as we can possibly scrape together to get the best panels to make them as low to the ground and as much efficient as possible, so that it'll be the least invasive for anybody. Because. That's just, you know what yeah. we want to do, and and hopefully we will get to do it. And I hope, I hope that this isn't you know carboshed by, um, by, you know I, I understand. I wouldn't like it either. I if I you know had a few and I found out hey there's going to be some solar panels there, I wouldn't like it either. Um, I I don't know what to say about that. We tried we tried our best. We're very worried about the planes. We're worried about yeah. Kinley, and um, we. We eliminated as much as we could to try to get it as best as we can. We really were in a corner. We just boxed in, and that's yes. how it is. We didn't have any idea it was going to be like that. And we can't put it way up far away. It's just, it's so far away, they say we'd be prohibitive. And if you had a million dollars, you wouldn't do it because you'd just lose money paying for all the, the wires to go underground and all the things to get it way in the back or pay up high there. So, all right, we, that's we, all we, um, can we get it. Say. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. No hands on Zoom. I think we're good to go. Okay. Um, thank you. We'll just to be continued. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll get on. We'll um, have this um, conversation again on at the planning board, which is um, probably where mm -hmm. where to start. Good place to start. Yeah. All right.
I mean, not that we haven't started already. Sure. Yeah. Soon you have uh, muted me. No. And I'm going to make a very serious question to the town of Rochester. Um, this is directed to uh, Martha Slater and Julie, the town clerk. There are two questions and one request. Are you listening? Uh, you just uh, please make your point, Robert. It's not a point. Okay, it's make your question. Number one, who is the webmaster of the Rochester website of Vermont? Well, Robert, I'm not sure why you are asking questions that you know the answers of. You know that Norm Christensen is the manages the website for the town of Rochester, Vermont. What's, what's your second question? Next question, who has access to the open the open uh, software that can access the uh, deletions, requests, and anything onto the Rochester website. I believe that Julie can add the, um, she regularly adds the agendas and minutes to, to the meetings. To the and when we need something more complicated, we ask for Norm's support. Okay. okay, so why are the meetings of October 5th, 2021 planning zoning board meetings not present on the website? I suppose it's because we have a new person that volunteered to take those minutes and they're not quite up to speed on what is required of that, and we're working to remedy that. Well, I would suggest that, that anyone, whether elected, appointed, or employed by the town of Rochester, that they, when they wear the hat of the responsibilities, they take on open meeting rules and make certain that they are proper. Well, thank you for that suggestion. Right. Thank you, we're working on it. Okay. Yep. Got to go. Yep. Bye. I'm still in the meeting. <laughs> All right. Um, the next item on the agenda was the issue of the reserve counts at the White River Credit Union and our recommendations to move those to the Mascoma. Is that what we're thinking? Correct. That we can. Uh, get a better return on on those. Which which accounts are we talking about? So these would be all of the reserve accounts um, that are currently at the credit union. It was a suggestion that they made mm -hmm. because they know that um, there's possibility that we would have um, a better return on that money if we yeah, yeah sent them yeah. over too. So it's I want to say. 15, 30 accounts, 15? Um, it's all the accounts in the... Yeah, it's all the, uh, 20, yeah. 20 something. Must be 20 in, in yep. here yeah. anyway, right? Yep. Yeah, they're printed on a page in there, but yeah, it's all the yep. all of our reserves that we have at the credit union. So you would still be opening an individual account for each reserve, correct? Yes. Yep. They would be 19. set up the way they are at the credit union, but just moved 19. to a different 19. Thing. Yeah. No, I, I might as well. Oh, if we can, you know, yeah. every little bit more we can get in the coffers is is, is you know, is a is a plus. Yeah. yeah. So. Move it. Yeah, I'd move to make that make that switch. A second. And then all in favor. All, all right. right. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, now we're getting on to uh, Joan. Are you still here? She is. Yeah. Do you want to give us your updates? You're muted, Joan. Are you there, Joan? Oh, here she comes. Hey, I, right. hey, I, I unmuted myself. Right, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll start again. It's going to be really quick. 
Kevin, I sent you a cooperative agreement from the Federal Highway Administration. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Did you see that? Okay. So that's the only thing is um, take a look at it, see if you have any questions. I think it's pretty straightforward at this point. And then um, I need to get it back to the Federal Highway Administration. And then I think we're all set with our grant for the West Hill Bridge. Okay, good. Um, we need to, Joan, this is Frank, we need to meet yes. at some point or, or get together and uh, talk about the emergency generator for the town office, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. okay, yeah, I need to put together a bid, pack, uh, or bid package and, and the bid announcement. Uh, but I'll talk about that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can I make a comment? This is Robert from Zoom. Is Um... Yeah, you have a quick comment, Robert, on topic? Well, there's, a, there's a generator company that's removing the uh, converter from property onto the other side today on the Bethel Mountain Road. Regarding Joan's commentary, I'm just wondering uh, why that, uh, the cost of that is, moving forward. Secondly, I want to ask the town of Rochester, including Martha and Nancy and the rest, the price of the guardrails that were removed. All right, all right. I'm sorry, Robert, but we're going to, um, we're going to um, mute you again because you're, you're, um, you're moving off topic, not, not, not what we're talking about here. Um, all right. Where were we? Uh, Jones. Yes. Uh, we we're talking. You're, gonna, you're working on the um, putting the bid package out for the generator for the town office. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, I have to say it's on my to-do list, but I'm, I haven't started working on it yet because I'm still doing FEMA stuff. Okay. okay. I'll have some conversation with you about that anyway. I've uh, I've been talking about it a little bit, checking around a few things, and uh, I'd like to run them by you. Uh, you mean with regard to the generator? Yes. Okay, great. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, Tony Goofy's not here today. Oh, yes, he is back there. I see you. Yeah. Okay. We also have Jeanette on Zoom as well. I don't know if she's here to okay. speak, but she's here. All right. We, uh, we have the Zoom meeting with I think we sent you a letter that was an update of the things that are needed on the at the library. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, I would just say that I would uh, second or even more uh, Rob's comments about the committee to look at these situations with the town buildings. And, okay, that's yeah. All I have to yeah. say for now. No, thank you. Thank you. Jeanette has something that she wants to join in on? She's still muted. If you have anything, Jeanette? Nope, I'm, nope, just, I'm just here as an observer. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, don't have anyone here from the highway. I know that um, I pretty much got the sand stash built up for the winter. That's um, looking good. I noticed they were... Um, put in the rigs on the trucks to get ready to plow, so um, winter is coming. Mm -hmm. Terry, have you got anything on the utilities front? No. No. And I, is Jeff Gephardt here on Zoom? He is on Zoom. Jeff, do you have anything? Hi. Hi, yes. Uh, briefly, uh, um, just wanted to note that the uh, Vermont Council on Rural Development uh, assisting us uh, through the model communities uh, program um, has uh, put together a flyer i got one down to the town office and julie made some copies and we'll be distributing the rest today for a quintown um, second stage meeting november 1st it will be in person at pierce hall from 6 30 to 9 p.m and also available at that same time via zoom um, in the conversation earlier, there was a uh, desire expressed that we look at our buildings and assets holistically. Um, and uh, what uh, I think the uh, Rochester area 
actually will be doing is we'll be looking at those buildings and gauging public sentiment in the valley uh, for you know prior prioritization actually of the things that we need to do. Um, that I think will dovetail nicely with the feasibility study kickoff um, November 17th. Um, just two ways where we're trying to read the public's uh, desires uh, when they understand the conditions of our town assets. Um, in doing that, we have uh, received this month uh, the light audit performed by Energy Efficiency um, Investments Incorporated. And I say light because it's a free audit. It's a desire on their part to uh, help us and make some money. But uh, we need to have a discussion um, going further as to what we do um, with the audit and uh, how, we, how we react. Um, part of what has come back in the audit um, is, is energy related, but it's really not energy. It's the, the structure of our library itself. Um, and uh, I did happen to notice in uh, the Herald of uh, October 21st that the Preservation Trust of Vermont has announced an opening uh, of a uh, 2022 Paul Room Historic Grant Titleization Grant Round. These are grants $50,000 to $100,000 with an application deadline of December 15th. Um, the awards are for the preservation and restoration of nonprofit and municipally owned buildings and community gathering spaces of economic and social significance in rural communities. That sounds like our library, um, and we have a structure right now that's not shedding water. If we allow that to continue, we will not have a structure. Um, the uh, only other thing that I wanted to mention, and this is on me because I think the select board has already uh, approved it, but correct me if I'm wrong, I'd like to take a look at the um, mowing contract, uh, the upcoming mowing contract, and see if there's a way that uh, uh, I can word things that the board would find comfort in and uh, attempt to uh, move some of our mowing to electronic means. Recording in progress. Um, excuse me, Jeff, could I ask you a quick question? Um, I, the meeting you're having November 1st it, it, is at Pierce Hall, but I didn't get the time. I'm sorry. Uh, 6.30 to 9 p.m. Okay, okay, thank you very much. All right, um, that's um, the um, the grant for the preservation trust um, issue. That that seems that's that's something we should pay attention to here. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah. The totally agree. Yeah. Is that um, Jeanette? You're on the line. Is that something that you'd be um, you'd be willing to take a stab at writing a grant or looking at that grant? I, I would. Um, however, the question is, what would we want the grant to do? Well, it sounds like there's some um, some issues about, as Jeff put the the water shedding, you know, um, basically stable, stabilizing the identified issues with the um, with the envelope of the building, the structure of the envelope, yeah, the structure, yeah. Because I know, I mean, they won't pay for routine maintenance items uh, such as the painting. What I'm wondering, what I'm wondering is that um, being Preservation Trust, I've had it on my to-do list to ask them this question anyway. The first floor exterior wood cladding um, either because because of the nature of the wood or because of the nature of the way it is attached to the to the building itself won't retain paint um, we've only painted the second floor of the library once in the 17 years that I've been at the library and I believe we've done the bottom half three times and that's all you know now the, the worst of it I don't, I don't know if Preservation, Preservation Trust, Trust would allow us to replace the siding on the first floor, you know, being a historic building, 
or not. I don't know if that's something the trustees or the town would even consider doing. Uh, um, but it certainly is a continued problem. One contractor did mention to me that they felt the cold air was getting up under that first floor boards um, and whether just somehow closing off access to cold air um, you know would help things but before you write a grant you have to know exactly what you're asking for the money. So there needs to be some discussion um, about what these structural things would be um, and I am not the person to come up with that have you read the um, energy audit from Energy Efficiency Investments, Inc.? Have you read that from October 5th? Do you have a copy of that? I believe Jeff sent me a copy. Um, it is, it's not something that I've, I've been thinking about in regard to a, um, you know, a, a grant for the building. Right, but the, that energy audit directly addresses a lot of the issues that you're also concerned about. So you may want to read that to see if that helps you determine what you want to apply for with your grant. Okay. Okay. But again, being a town building and, you know, the, the select board, the trustees, you don't know, need to be in agreement on exactly what to write a grant for okay. and then that information needs to go to the grant writer i mean i just can't pull out of my hat that we're going to do this to the building on my own okay so you you're you are or you are not in, in being uh the one that writes the grant if we feed you um, the information about what we're asking for the money to do? Well, um, we've never found another grant writer in the last 17 years, so I guess, yes, it would be me. I would love to have, you know, help, um, but I certainly will endeavor to take it on. All right, well, I think we have a, um, some good material to work with with this, um, this um, review of the town buildings and the, and the specific identification from a, a you know, qualified person to point out the issue. So I think that um, we, can, we can work with you on that. Hold on, that. Robert, he's speaking. Well, maybe Jeff can uh, you know, give us the top five that yeah. we should go through. Yeah. And Jeff could probably uh, speak to what the content of the grant, what needs to be written into the grant is, just so we can know how difficult it is to write up the grant. Yeah. Jeff, I, I, I sounds like you'd be willing <laughs> <the> to <laughs> join in with that. Um, I will assist. That, you know, I think that we may, um, we may need to open things up a little bit to see exactly what is there in order to prescribe an appropriate fix as well as identify the very unusual cladding that exists on the first floor mm -hmm. of that building. Mm -hmm. and that is going to be, I think, a challenge um, uh, to... Got a serious to water that. issue, that's for sure. That we need to address. Yeah. That should be mm -hmm. top. And that's... Part of the reason why the paint won't stay on the building, yeah, it's the moisture. I mean, we we have to keep exterior water to the exterior, and we yes. have to make sure that one moisture <laughs> inside is not contacting cold surfaces of the next building. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Sounds like first thing we need to do is determine what. Um, the historic preservation folks will allow us to do with that ex that cladding. Hopefully, we can get rid of it. Yeah. Well. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I said Maybe. hopefully. But if we could at least uh, um, eliminate the infiltration of water behind it, that'd be a good first step. Yeah. 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 I don't think you make a comment about this um, grant, Robert. 
Yes, I, I believe that uh, the town of Rochester and uh, Jeanette and the library or whatever should not depend on Three Rivers and the grants that are being um, offered. Now, with regards to one, one important thing in a library is silence. And I do not go to the Rochester Library because there is no silence. Because the librarian um, is not proper. <laughs> okay. Um, well, we would take that. Um, that seems to be a, a separate topic than what we're um, what we're talking about right here. But um, well, again, do you, in you, you live you're, in my, yeah, it's in, your, um, your, and you live in Bethel. Yeah, and you're diverging from. Uh, is the Bethel Library silent? Let me make this clear: <laughs> the clabbers that Jeanette's talking about could be replaced, repaired, insulated, and restored in a proper manner in <laughs> the next week. Okay. If, All right. You didn't, again, you didn't listen. Yeah, well, they're not clabberts either. So, um, um, thank you. Thank you. So, um, I think that we don't have anything under old business. And we do have an item for public comment. Is there anything that we didn't cover tonight that someone would like to speak about? Um, then I'm going to thank everyone for, um, for their input tonight. And, and we have um, plenty of things to think about. And, um, uh, I'm responding. I move to adjourn. No. Thank you so much. No. No. A second. You second no. that? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you.